Uh, we have all kinds of technical problems today, but that's the fun with EuroPython. And one of the problems that you can have is like a webcam not working. So I'm spotlighting our next speaker already so that you can see Choke. Hello. Well, <laughs> welcome to EuroPython. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, you're a developer relations lead at Terminus DB. And you've prepared a talk for us today. Yes, that's my full-time uh, job, yes. <laughs> yes, your full-time job. I do job. have a job, yes. <laughs> uh, that's great. You're calling in from London, right? Yes, that's correct. I'm in London. And uh, let's I see. I can see you now, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the cameras. This this is the fun thing. Uh, thing things break sometimes uh, if you run this on your own home hardware. So. Uh, it's great that the camera is back. I have no idea what went wrong, but uh, I would say it's better that it breaks on my side than on yours. So if you would like to, please share your screen and then right. we'll get on with the conference. <laughs> okay, so I would just get started because uh, uh, we are running a little bit late already. So um, yeah, so welcome to my talk. And uh, I always, always have this habit of putting my, um, my, oh, actually the slides is, well, the slide, I just thought my first typo is wrong. It's slides.com slash check thing and then slash uh, B Python. So it's not a bitly link. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I would I would share it afterwards. So uh, yeah, share my slides and um, how to be Pythonic, uh, the sign a query language in Python. And those are my social media um, link below. So uh, you could actually find me anywhere. Um, so I'm Czech. I love open source projects. So I've been, um, you know, working in a lot of open source projects. And recently, I not recently, but like I mean, like my full time job is working with Terminus DB. We are an open source open source graph database that, um, you know, you can work it like Git. So you can uh, share, you can you know collaborate with people, you can do branching and merging and all those kind of stuff that you do with Git but in a graph database. So uh, I also organize a lot of uh, different, you know, um, events, including EuroPython here. And also uh, PyData Global, I've talked about it uh, yesterday in my licensing talk. Uh, you know, CFP is closing soon and we have pajamas towards the end of this year. So um, yeah, contact me if you're interested in more this kind of conference. And um, yeah, I, I won't spend too much time on this one, but uh, to, to, to tell you this, here, but please, please get in touch if you're interested in submitting to Pi Data Global or you know want to get involved in Pajamas. Um, also, I stream on Twitch. Uh, like yesterday, Naomi in his uh, in her sorry in her um uh, your keynote, then like she put like a, a screenshot of my of my Twitch at the background, and I was like, whoa, okay. So yeah, if you want to watch more more of my tutorial, just uh, you know find me on Twitch. I I'm uh, online usually four uh, four times a week, and there will be tutorials uh, all in Python and also um, other you know channel like other other programs that like I would talk about things. Well, I am really like you know um, really catch my tongue today because like I think I'm. Uh, I just woke up actually. So, um, so first of all, um, I would love to have this poll. So if you're watching right now, so uh, this is, you know, you can use your phone, you can, you know, just take a, uh, you know, a capture of this uh, QR code or go to this link here and do the poll. And I am starting it right now, actually. So I go there. And um, so, yeah, I would just want to ask the questions that like, what does Pythonic mean? Is it a thing? So um, yeah, like it, I would just give you like maybe a few seconds to do it because I don't have like I have a short talk uh, today. So they're they're like I can see how many of you have voters. Only three. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Yeah, maybe I'll give you a little bit more time for the first one because it's uh, difficult to go to the link and stuff. So um, yeah, and because I will show the result, I will show the results. So please participate, and um, that's that's why like we do it live here. So um, do you think Pythonic is a thing? Do you think like you know? It's actually a thing or people just like, you know, try to, you know, be uh, smart or, you know, so yeah, I can see the vote is uh, going up. That's good. That's good. Love seeing all of you participating. And let, let's go to, let's go to the result and have a look. So, um, oh, I, I'm polling myself. No, this is not supposed to be. So give me one sec. I got to quickly go to the result here. I don't know why it's like showing me. Yeah. Okay. So, and I would just give a pause here. And most of you uh, actually said that it's actually 20, 23 of you said that it's, yes, yeah, sure, it's a thing. So yeah, well, this is like even more than uh, last time I did this poll, like 
people really think that Pythonic is a thing. And um, so I am very interested because like, I've been using Python for a while and this really bugs me. And I go to uh, look it up uh, online, you know, ask Google anything. And, um, so I found this on Stack Overflow. This is one of my favorite web websites. And someone said that Pythonic means that the code just doesn't get the syntax right. So it just doesn't execute, but it's, you know, using Python as a way that is uh, conventionally like people like agree to use it that way. So it's, it's accepted by the Python community. I think it's like, it's a very good way of putting it. So that's why I put it here. And so in a nutshell, I would say that it's more like an artistic thing. So it's not a right or wrong. It's more like whether it's beautiful, it's appealing, it's good looking, uh, but just but, but, well, beauty is not a right or wrong, right? Because beauty is at the beholder's eye, you know, you can think, you can think that this, you know, this dog is cute, but someone may say that, oh, no, no this dog is scary, you know? Um, so yeah, like everybody can have different opinions on it, but there is a general, general kind of um, agreement on, on some standards. For example, like we, we have, you know, beauty queen contests and people would, you know, pick one that, you know, uh, that they think that could represent the country, that is that that's our standard of beauty and things like that. So uh, that's that's something that I ask a lot when I would just start a Python when I because I was data scientist, I was yeah, I start Python because, you know, of data science and I, <laughs> I use Panda a lot and I was like, why I have to do things this way? Why I can't just write a follow to do it? Uh, well, you could write a follow to do it, but you're not making use of the advantage of using pandas because pandas you know um is is very optimized at, at the back end is used numpy and numpy is super optimized so if you do the things like for example aggregation using you know their intended way to do it rather than just doing it in a for loop that's so much faster and also you know this well, this is not python i hope you <laughs> you notice uh, this is java i think uh, or javascript things like that yeah I, I can't really tell but you can tell from like the semicolon and like this is not not python um but you know um well you could you know put it like uh, in in a very simple for loop in in python uh, this is something i i came across a lot when i am uh, doing my journey of you know, I will explain later, but it's a spoiler that I, I translate a lot of code from JavaScript to Python uh, for the Terminus DB client. And some of the things I see all the time is that JavaScript, you will have a for loop like that one, the, the one on top. And it's really complicated and the code become really big and nasty, like very difficult to see because, um, you know, there's a lot of dictionary and like traveling fluid, you know, well, it's, it's a JSON in, in JavaScript, but like traveling fluid with an index is at an extra layer of complexity. And with Python, you can just loop through all the items. That, that's amazing. And um, of course, like if it's something very simple, you can even make it into one line, use a, you know, a list com a composition and things like that to, to, to generate it with just one line. That's Pythonic, that's amazing. Um, so, and I think that I like a lot about Python is that, you know, uh, when you check whether something is in a list, you can just like check it, whether that's in the list, like rather than like going through it, like, uh, or using index of like the, like the JavaScript. So that's really great. Um, so uh, before I talk about how we designed a query language in Python, I want to ask a question. So again, go to, go to your, uh, your, your the, the polling and I'm starting the next question right now. I hope that is working. And uh, so let me have a look at this one. And oops, it's a bit difficult for me to switch between all these tabs because the Zoom thing is on the way. Okay, so uh, it's so it's, this is this is done. So let's move on to the next one. So how can I move on to the next one? Yeah, I think I just like the next one. And do you like C code? So I have started a poll. So you should be able to vote it. I will go. Uh, do you still have the link? Okay, I will just go back to the link here. So in case you just join the middle. Okay, so. Um, so please vote uh, whether you like SQL or not. Um, yeah, I'm hiding the result because I don't want you to be affected by it. So um, yeah, uh, well, I hope you, you kind of, you have used SQL before. It's, it's the most, you know, um, most uh, common, you know, um, query language right now. And um, I don't know how many of you are using, you know, uh, uh, dealing with data or, you, know, you don't have to be a data scientist to deal with data. Like if you, for example, if you build a backend like or, or, or a database for your, let's say Django app, then maybe you, you also have to uh, deal with the data. So I don't know whether you like uh, writing SQL in, in like in Python. I mean, you could, you could 
you know, use SQL alchemy on this to, to execute SQL in Python. So I don't know whether it's your thing. So, okay, I think that time's up. So sorry, it's a bit random here because I have to really like make use of my time. And okay, so it's kind of not that diverse. It's like more or less like, you know, 50 50 but you know there's a little bit more people saying that they are not a fan which is surprising because last time i did it is like a uh, lot of people say that they love it <laughs> uh last time i did it in uh, pi amsterdam so yeah I, I don't know like maybe maybe the the conversation of people joining is a little bit different so it all started when i become a developer advocate of terminus db uh so what is terminus db i just want to spend a, a few you know just a quick uh, introduction of it. So this is a, a table. This is, you know, you, you have seen it all the time. This is, you know, something that, you know, you, you, um, you know, came across quite a lot, especially in relational database. So here, when you look at it, you, you will be like, okay, I'm, I see some people's name, I see some dates of birth. So maybe it's a list of people. But, uh, well, it takes you a while to understand what is mother and father. Well, it's mother and father, but like, it's number, it's not a name. So what's going on here? And then you look at the beginning of this table and say, like, you see, like, person ID. Oh, so maybe I should map it, map the mother and father to the person's ID. I join the table again, joining a table, common thing, joining it again. And then I would get the answer that I want. Maybe I can find out who is John's mother or John's grandmother, you know. Um, but what if, like, I, I just, like, store data like this, like, rather than I don't have to mentally join things because, you know, this one is more obvious. You don't need to spend time on like figuring it out. We just look at it. It's, it's a family tree. It's a family tree. And then like it's color coded as well. Like, you know, it's very easy to see Mary's John's mother and Patricia and Sally is uh, John's grandmother. You don't have to do the joins. And in query language, it's, it's like, this is how you find the answer in SQL. You have to, you know, do a select and then, you know, select and then do a join. And uh, I'm not a big fan of that because uh, sometimes very, like it's again, it's like why I can't do it like in the program or why I have to join this table again, aggregate and join it back to itself again is a nightmare. Uh, it could easily become like a thousand line of, of SQL. It's like what? Um, but like, what if like we write things like that? So this is what uh, what is happening in um, in Terminus DB that like when I join, they have this um, this JavaScript client that they have a query language called uh, Waco JS. So uh, so this is, well, this is not Python, this is JavaScript. We can see it. Oh, there's no semicolon here, but it's still, you know, this is JavaScript. And um, so I just copied it from that exam uh, the example. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, again, you know, it's, 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 it's a query language uh, in Waco. And then you just, because everything is stored in a graph, remember it's a family tree. So everything is just a relationship, it's a triple. So you can see that like a person and the relationship mother, and it give me the mother ID and you can find like do it one more le level up you can like have mother id mother and then that would be grandmother id and then in between i just like kind of i need to get, give out the name rather than id so that's why i have uh, four kind of things here but you know uh, in theory it's just two it's just that i need the name so I, I kind of make it more and um so yeah i was thinking that's that's really nice that's really nice that you can kind of just you know Build a query, like you, rather than SQL, you have to write all this join thing and then make it into a string and put it in your script. I want to use, you know, do something like that in Python. I want to just like, you know, a query is just a Python object and building things and, you know, some of them a little bit chaining or like putting in parameters and construct your query in a Pythonic way. So, well, let's create Waco Pi. Let's, you know, make those JavaScript that awesomeness into Python awesomeness. <laughs> and I just, yeah, I want to make it. A query language for Pythonista for, for data scientists. And the team say, yes, like wonderful, wonderful. So we can do it now. So what is uh, Waco Pi? Um, so first of all, it's something like when I was planning it, I was like, okay, it must be something that you can pip install, right? Because well, otherwise, you know, it's, it's not as convenient because the PyPI is great, you know, and people can, you know, just install stuff very easily. And um, also, uh, not uh well it's like a few months ago we added this uh data frame um you know uh it's extra you know data frame option there so if you install it it will install also pandas so it actually lets you talk um with uh you know uh, pandas so when you get a result back from your uh query then actually it will just build the data frame for you rather than like 
you know, uh, it, it, it's like natively it will be a dictionary uh, because it, it used JSON and then when it comes back, it will become a dictionary. But this will become a, a pandas data frame. We all we, we all love pandas, you know. Um, so and also, you know, uh, well, yeah. So that that's how you code it. Just dump the result in it. So that that's great. Okay. So, uh, so the the query uh, actually this is actually. Uh, you do everything in Python. You can create a database in Python. You can connect to any database in Python. You can delete it in Python if you want to. Um, you can uh, build a schema because like, it's a graph database. You, you can build a schema graph with Python. You you can um, you know load in the data in Python. You can you know um, you know query and get back the result in Python and even in pandas data frame. So uh, it's all Python, it's, it's, it's just a Python script. You can do and everything like this. Uh, rather than, you know, this is the raw format of Raco. It's, it's, a, it's just a JSON that lets the front end talk to the back end. So uh, no one wants to code like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, so without that, you know, Raco Pi, so well, you could, well, you, you have to, you know, really construct this. So it's like SQL, you construct the query like as a string and send it, you know, uh, to, to your, your database. But because uh, the, the portal core for Terminus DB is uh, JSON. So uh, if you don't have the, if you don't have the Python client, you have to uh, construct this JSON uh, yourself <laughs> and, uh, and use, you know, and pass it, you know, maybe, well, we have a API, so maybe you can just use request to send it, you know, um, and um, it's not nice. And and now because uh, recently we have uh, also launched this um, branching, merging, and all these um, all these abilities. Uh, it's not in the slides because it's very new. Uh, it's the you know branching, merging, and cloning, all this stuff. So uh, now you can even do it with the Python client. So you can fully control, you know, a version control your database with just Python script. Uh, so so that's what we want to do. And um, so again, like this is something new uh, that I recently think that it would be great because last time I gave this uh, the, the, this uh, talk at the Pi Amsterdam and that people was like someone said uh, you know uh, well uh, people prefer you know uh, to have this uh, you know label and description putting it as a, as a parameter rather than you know just a chain. So this is how uh, Waco JS was like. It's just chaining a bunch of uh, calls a bunch of methods and then it will just build a query at the end so afterwards this object will be the query that you want but uh, I think it's like maybe in Python people don't like it as much I don't know you have to show me I will have another poll for that um, so I, I created this and uh, now you can actually do both but I just want to know what do people prefer like if you are given these two options if you are writing your Terminus DB query will you write it in a chaining kind of way more like what we used to have and or this new way of like putting label in there so I'll, I'll start the poll now and so you can go to the link there and start and uh, let me see and yeah so uh, please uh, answer the questions and um, yeah I hope this is working or do I have to click this to, uh, yeah sorry let me have a look no yeah it's not there yet so let me move on and yeah, you should be able to vote now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. So yeah. Oh, I, I supposed to hide it. <laughs> I don't know. But like, you don't see which one is which. So it doesn't matter. Uh, just pick, uh, pick which one you prefer. And we would have a look at the result. And um, yeah. So yep. So I think it's the last chance like uh, to vote. I really, this is the question that I really want to know, like what do people prefer? Um, because we, well, you can do both, but I just want to see like whether, um, yeah, whether pe people still prefer the, <laughs> the multi-parameter way or maybe people think that chaining is also beautiful. I want to know which one is more Pythonic. So um, yeah, okay. So I should uh, really have uh, a pause here Okay, so people prefer multi-parameters, so that's great. Uh, I, I was not guessing wrong, so that's good. That, uh, you know, that's really, really good. And uh, yeah, so we well, now you can do this. We added this method. So um, I hope this is a good news for Pythonister who, who, who prefer like that one rather than the other. So um, 
so I would tell you also some of the design challenges that I have. Anybody spot anything wrong here? I know that you can't answer me and I'm not looking at the chat in the in the track, but uh, if someone's spotting it uh, was wrong, then uh, I'm trying to look at the chat right now. But uh, yeah, you can you can say it there and um, whether people can. Um, so yeah, uh, what's going wrong here is that Python, you can't have a method like this. <laughs> you can't have a method like this. So. Um, and is and is a, is a is a keyword, so uh, we can't have a method using just n. I know that if you're you know a, a Python guru, maybe you, it's a way that you could do that. Maybe change the interpreter or something. I, I don't know. But for me, I was like, oh no, you can't. Yes, somebody spotted the and yes in the chat. Great. Um, so. Yeah, so that's why like I, I, I make it a wacko n as uh, so a wacko underscore n. But that's horrible. It's super long. You can see that like compared to the JavaScript, this is super long and uh, it's very cranky. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's it's like a lot of things to type because I'm horrible with typing. And um, so uh, just like recently in the newest uh, version, I added the plus operator. So the operator overload is really quite nice in Python. Uh, all my colleague was like, oh yeah, yeah, you can do it in Python. They, well, they, they, they didn't think about that, but like, well, I didn't think about that myself as well. Someone suggested to me last time in Py Amsterdam. I think that's why I love giving this talk and people can suggest to me what they, um, what they think that is, uh, is good. So uh, I could, you know, I could add it in. So uh, the plus operator, thank you for letting me know that, you know, uh, that's actually I was having this like kind of, oh, maybe I can make it more like, you know, more native Python by adding some operator thing like uh, over, overload there. But someone mentioned it. I was like, yeah, then let's do it. Um, that's really good. Uh, I still have problem with or not as from. They are all like keywords in Python. So if you think of any other like elegant way to do it, please let me know. Um, so yeah, now you can like just you know, add all these queries together. You will see that when you use, um, well, I, I encourage you to try us out, but like when you, you see that like it's actually good to have a plus because you would join all these query together quite often. So um, looking into the future, what we want to do, and uh, well, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, a, a, a pandas data frame and, uh, you know, uh, it's, well, it's in Jupyter Notebook. I have done this tutorial in the Jupyter Notebook, and um, this is the result that I got back. And this is, uh, you know, I've talked about that we used the data frame uh, function that we could put it into a data frame like this. And um, what if we have a graph visualization in Jupyter Notebook? I know that, you know, recently I discovered that using Bokeh, you could have interactive graph and also, but Bokeh, you can also use it in, um, in you know, in make to use it with gra uh, Network X to make a, a graph visualization, a network graph visualization, but that's not very nice. There's no label there. It's, it's a bit like difficult to use. So I'm thinking like having a nice graph visualization will be great. So um, loading data from data frame. Um, well, we, cause now we just like, we just turn the result back into the data frame, but we can't just like put a data frame and then just push it as a, as a knowledge graph that requires a little bit of, um, of guessing because, um, because like, it's easy to see like how the result can come back as a table, but it's difficult to see like how your table could map properly into a knowledge graph that there's, there's, that's need a lot of, you know, a bit of work and we want to. Uh, CRI clients and I'm thinking like well it's easy you just be with click but the only problem is that like uh, now because we will have help which is like kind of a lock-in thing so there's some like JWT uh, of all kind of uh, communication to the server so that needs to be solved and we are still working on it and I want more uh, fail-proof checks that uh, you know I want to um, you know, uh, to warn the, the user before we push things to the back end, because it may be a big query and then be something for, you know, a, a typo or something for a tree field, but like it will still go to the back end and it just waste some time that it would turn out to be a bad query. And so, yeah, maybe checking also like checking the version. Sometimes, you know, like uh, people are not using the same version of the database and the, you know, um, and the Python client, if they're not compatible, we should uh, warn them. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's it. I still have a few minutes for, for Q&A because I see there's some questions coming in. So join our sprint tomorrow. Uh, we will have the sprint. We'll work on the Python clients. This is my my, my, my baby. So please come and help me. <laughs> and um, 
Also, uh, we have, you know, the, the, the world of Buckle Craft is my, uh, my, 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 one of my tutorial every Friday, uh, 5 p.m. UK time, a CST will be 6 p.m. So this week, uh, I think you would prefer Guido's Q&A, but you know, you can join me next week. Um, <laughs> so I'll teach you how to use it, how to use uh, Waco Pi. And also, um, you know, follow us on Twitter. You know, we have a Discord uh, community, so join us at the Discord community. And um, so I will leave you with these slides and questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, first, thank you very much for this talk. And uh, there's not really all oh, the questions are coming in. So, hello, Simon. Uh, yeah. Can we somehow extract the uh, WOQL interpreter so it can be used outside of Terminus DB? Uh, okay, I'm reading it. So, uh, uh, sorry, was a. Could, could you repeat like uh, oh the uh, the Waco interpreter is it yeah yes basically no, can you do the in interpreter without Terminus DB so can you just use that yes actually uh, well actually Waco is designed for Terminus DB so uh, you need something that kind of take the same protocol so in theory you could build something because we are open source you can make a clone of it and then you know you you can change it you know change the store or something if you want to and it will still talk well with Waco. But the problem is that, you know, like, because I don't know why you would do that because, uh, uh, but, you know, we are open source. You can totally make your own version of Terminus DB uh, that also work with Waco. That, that's still fine. But uh, if you want to, for example, plug it to, you know, use it with uh, with MySQL, then <laughs> no, or plug it to use with Neo4j, no, because Neo4j use Cyber. So it, it, it won't work, work that way. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a protocol to, to talk uh, with, you know, for, 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 for the front end, you know, the client to talk with the back end, which is the Terminus DB. So Terminus DB is built with uh, Prolog, actually. If you're interested, you can actually totally, um, you know, look at that repo and we love contributors. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's another question in the chat uh, uh, or in the talk channel. For the graphs, does the JavaScript client have a graph visualization? Uh, the yeah, the, actually the console, so we, okay, so it's a little bit explaining what we have right now. So uh, right now, if you, uh, you know, we, we have a, a console that is kind of like a front end thing. And can I show you here, actually, I, I, I hope I have one lo running locally. So yeah, local host, I hope it's still running. I haven't stopped it. So you can actually get this uh, for yourself. And, uh, you know, this is a, uh, a you know a console and then here actually if I go into any one of these and um, you see that this is oops yeah my computer is super slow at the moment I think because I'm doing a lot of streaming oh <laughs> <laughs> it it doesn't want to work okay so you can actually make a query here so here you can make all the queries and all the stuff so uh, so yeah so, so what was the question again sorry <laughs> I'm a bit lost. <laughs> the question was for the graphics, does the JavaScript client have graph visualization? Right, so it actually has. So let me see if I can do this. Uh, so this is not planned, right? So I don't know whether it would uh, work. Oop, Waco is not defined, uh, whether I spell it wrong or, yeah. So can I get the result please? No, it doesn't. I don't know what I've done with it, but uh, but actually you can see it in a um, in a in a in a graph uh, visualization. Uh, it's not here, but uh, before because we have uh, two versions. So in the previous version, we'll have a we'll have a graph visualization that you can actually put in a script, and the script can basically let you control. It's like plotting with Maplelib. Let's say you can control how it looks. Uh, you can control which to show, which not to show, and things like that. Um, but you know, uh, right now we well, we still have the visualization, but all this customization is off temporarily because we are still, um, we have to upgrade it from our previous version to this version. And um, yeah, and it kind of, uh, yeah, take, take okay, some time. I think we'll have to move the rest of that into the chat. So yeah. thank you very much for the talk. Uh, if somebody presses control K uh, and types in query, he'll find the chat and can continue this. So uh, thanks for the great talk. Here's your applause. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.